Welcome back to the Literary Lounge. I'm Emily. And I'm Paige. And I'm Abby. And as you can tell, we have a special guest on this Wednesday's podcast episode. We have my little sister, Abby, joining us. And we're going to be chatting on a bunch of different book questions that I've thrown together for us. Um, But welcome. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. when Emily calls me her little sister because I've never been smaller than her since I was an infant <laughs> but here I am yeah the younger sister you guys are so close in age too yeah yeah, yeah. So. so it's easy to get confused <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah so I'm Abby and I've known Paige for like just as long as Emily has um but I'm really excited to be here yeah and I just excited to have you I just have to say a quick thing too because um I know you girls like kind of introduced yourselves at the beginning of your first episode but mm-hmm. you guys are killing it oh thank you really you. are and you guys were so humble and I was like listening to your first episode I was like okay they are not giving themselves enough credit oh you're so Aww. sweet I know like you two talked about how you're both like small business owners but like Paige is not a small business owner she's a large business owner no, it's and, so she's, small. and she's <laughs> absolutely killing it oh, you're um so sweet. and created thank like you. this cute little space for you guys to podcast in um, and then Emily also got promoted recently at work, a big promotion at work. Um, and she's a small business owner and she has a blog and you guys are doing this podcast. So little sisters here to hype you guys up because you're absolutely killing it. Oh my so, God. It's so, so fun. And I remember when Emily like told me that for the first time that you guys were going to start this podcast, like literally two weeks later, you had it up and running. <laughs> I know. And you like <laughs> built this like awesome space in your basement. So like I couldn't believe like how quickly you guys got this off the ground and going. It, so it was so random. <laughs> That's, yeah. yeah, I'm here to hype you guys up and I'm just Aww. happy to be here. And even though I like kind of did like ask myself to come on the podcast. <laughs> Like, oh, we no. planned on inviting you. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you for making me feel better. <laughs> but I literally was like, "Can I be the first guest?" Well, um, we like were like, "Yeah, we have to have Abby on because." Yeah. So last week we had our husbands on, which like, yeah, that was fun. They're not readers though, so we were like, yeah. "Okay, who's like our first like avid reader guest?" And yeah. like, obviously it'd be you because like like you were saying like you grew up with Paige like I did like literally me and Paige like did your prom hair and makeup like yeah. Paige has like kind of been our third sister like yeah for, no literally though I remember that that was so sweet that was so cute like just like the best <laughs> memories but no I remember when you like officially texted me and asked me to come on the pod like you guys had already had Nick and David and you were trying to soften the blow like you were like <laughs> do you want to be our first female guest and I was like <laughs> Bitches. Okay. <laughs> and I hope the podcast too. is explicit because it is. Paige fed me two cinnamon toast crunch shots before I came on, <laughs> so like the words are just flowing. Yeah, but. it's already marked as explicit. <laughs> We're good. No, but I'm excited to be here. The first female guest. Yeah. A little oh, sister, yeah. Abby. So thank you for having me. Yeah, we're yeah, so excited. And you hyped us, but we'll hype you. Like you guys just bought a house. Like you got married last August. Like yes. You have the cutest little black lab puppy. Like you you. have so many wonderful things going for you. So yeah, thank you. Lots to be excited about. You've been busy with house projects and buying a house is such a big deal. It is. Oh my god, congratulations! Stressful. I know. And I was I was just telling you guys too how we had like had friends over in our house and I was like, this is my adult home and we're having like a college party in the basement. Like we (laughs) need to act like adults now that we're homeowners. But yeah, fun. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good time. My liver is not a college liver anymore, I've <laughs> realized. So. Well, it's lit in the literary lounge, so I'm excited to be here. Yeah. And I is. also feel like, am I the only one that has, like, slurs every time I say literary lounge? No, it's no. a thing. <laughs> That's fine. I don't know if it's a Cinnamon Toast Crunch part shots of the that Paige fed me, or if it's just that it's hard to say. <laughs> it but hard no, to say. it's so fun down here. And, like, Paige, if I had this in my basement, I would... <laughs> What? It's so fun, down here. Okay. They're, <laughs> I was like, wait, what? They're seeing, like, <laughs> the cool spot, but, like, everything that we see is, like, blankets on the wall. Okay, <laughs> you said it, not me, oh. but, like, literally there's tapestries hanging on the wall. In fact. <laughs> tapestries? Tap, sure. But I am facing you, too, so I have, like, the cute view. But yeah, I have to still, finish painting It this, looks awesome. Thank you. <laughs> it is fun. <sighs> cool well like I said this episode is more of like a book talk 
Mm -hmm. episode we're not recapping any books we won't spoil anything Mm -hmm. Um, I've come up with like 15 different questions I thought like the three of us could just kind of talk about different types of books whatnot um, get some good conversation going yeah before we get into it our question of the day is what is your favorite thing about spring my favorite thing is like the smell because you're like you're so yeah we have all four seasons in Minnesota and like we had such a long winter and I just love like Right now we've had like 80 degree weather and like just like the fresh air smell yeah. that you don't get in the winter. It's just been You so walk relaxing. outside and it like hits you. Yeah. yeah. You can like leave your windows you open in your house and your house just smells so fresh. Like yeah. I love that. Yeah. What about you guys? Yeah. When we were talking about this before the podcast started, I was like, I immediately thought of my least favorite thing. <laughs> like when I let my dog out in our like muddy, like half snowed backyard and then I have to let him back in the house. It's like he acts like I'm killing him every time I have to like wipe his paws <laughs> off. <laughs> um, so hard. But otherwise, like obviously like the sunshine and stuff just puts me in such a good mood and like being able to like take him on walks and not be like when are we done like not wanting to die the whole time so yeah that's probably my favorite part definitely I would echo that like I think it's just the mood boost for me like like you I don't really like spring in the sense Mm -hmm. that it's like a messy Mm -hmm. season especially like in Minnesota like it's not like a cute season like we like have like mud brown Mm -hmm. grass like it's just not good Mm -hmm. um but I like like going for a walk or whatever with like my husband and Mm -hmm. like our dog Toby just like having that feeling of like oh it's warm out like Mm -hmm. and I don't have to wear a jacket and like just knowing that like summer is like shortly on the horizon yeah and I feel like even when you go on walks in the winter it's like should we go for a snowshoe not like let's (laughs) go for a walk around the neighborhood it's like no let's put the snowshoes on like put the yak tracks on get (laughs) outside like (laughs) I'm just like I don't I never want to slip on the ice so like I don't even go for walks in the winter (laughs) (laughs) like sorry Toby yeah You're fat. <laughs> they have a yard they have a fenced in yard we all put fine. on winter weight even the dogs let's I know. be honest we yeah. just went in for toby's annual vaccines and the vet oh, was no. like he needs to lose two pounds which like isn't that bad oh uh, we all need to lose two pounds <laughs> <laughs> funny uh, okay well right. as i said no spoilers ahead so i yeah. won't warn you on those but i have some questions for you guys to generate some conversation on books yeah so when you guys invited me to do the book talk I was like I am not the avid reader that these two are here but I will totally pretend to have (laughs) but I know you guys did like your um book club podcast like yeah was it last week or the week before yeah it was like three weeks ago yeah so the book the book club has like totally broadened my horizons to like reading again so I'm very I'm very thankful for it yeah when Emily like came to me with starting a book club I was like well you like to read and I like to drink wine and eat charcuterie so like we are like (laughs) the perfect couple to like start this book club but I've been very thankful for it because it's like really broadened my horizons and I love reading so yeah Yeah. it's so fun book talk here we go Mm -hmm. let's get into it question one for you guys name an author you can always rely on to deliver and then suggest some of your favorite books by this author well my favorite author and the whole audience probably knows this already is sarah j mass mm-hmm. and she Drink. definitely can like <laughs> <Drink> <laughs> every time we re- recommend SGM. every episode yeah is that the rule well, drink every time you mess gonna be making it a her? rule it happens <laughs> every episode it's a theme Academia. yeah <laughs> like she is such a great writer like she i've i haven't read any bad books by mm-hmm. her and my favorite ones by her are Akatar. I'm still like starting the Crescent City series, but mm-hmm. I'm super excited to like read the rest of her books. Yeah. Yeah. When Emily first like told me about her, I was like, oh my God, fantasy. Like Emily, come on. Like I can't read fantasy. I did the same thing. <laughs> yeah. And then when I read the first Akatar book, I like my mom and sister and I were flying home from Italy and I finished the entire book in like the eight hour flight. Like sandwiched yeah. between my mom and sister. I was like, yeah. it was so freaking good. And I like looked at her that. after like kind of sheepishly. I'm like, that was so good. Yeah. <laughs> fantasy. I'm here for it. Okay. And I just want to say page two, like you you finished Akatar and you were like why didn't you push me harder to read these books <laughs> like, I'm like she's like mad at I'm you I'm like I'm not gonna throw them like <laughs> shove them down your throat you like, <laughs> you like recommended <laughs> them a year prior <laughs> don't shove them down your throat I literally shove all my book recommendations down Paige, your throat. I think she did that to me too like I put it off her so I was like fantasy no like <laughs> if you know I'm gonna like a book please shove it down my throat shove it down my throat <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> What about um, you, Abs? So I would say, um, you guys kind of gave me shit about this, but Colleen Hoover. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
I'm such a basic B when it comes to reading, but every time I pick up one of her books, it's like a quick, easy read. I'm done within 48 hours at the most. Like I've read a lot of her books, um, but some of my favorites have been It Ends With Us, which I know you guys talked about, um, Reminders of Him, and then the spooky ones, Verity and Leela, I also really liked. Um, and then I just wanted to shout out one more author, Kristen Hanna. We have read a few of her books for book club, and I have just loved The Great Alone and The Nightingale, both. Yeah, no, she's awesome. Like, I would yeah. totally reiterate that. Um, and I, I don't, like, I know that, like, Colleen Hoover's, like, overhyped, mm-hmm. but, like, she does have, like, a few solid books, like, you <laughs> Give know. <her> that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, for me, I would... I would again say what Paige said like Sarah J Mass. like mm-hmm. I read all three of her series and like have never been disappointed in any of them um but just to like throw another one into the mix I would say Jennifer Armin Trout because I'm like a huge fan of the Blood and Ash series and then the prequels that go along with that they're a lot like Sarah J Mass books so like if you're somebody that's like I loved Akatar, like what next like Jennifer Armin Trout all the way so awesome yeah okay next one what was the last thriller you read that shocked you in the end? And would you recommend it? So I think, well, we all just read this one for book club, but all the dangerous things, it was absolutely incredible. Yeah. And yeah. I like finished the second half of the book within like one night. I was like, I'll sit down and read 50 pages. And then I ended up sitting up until 1 a.m. finishing the book because it was so good. And like my jaw just like kept hitting the ground. Like I was like, oh my gosh, like sitting at home alone, like wow it was so good Mm -hmm. yeah that's so twisty and I would agree like that was also my book for like this next Mm -hmm. question was like because we all just read it like that was wild it was so twisty Mm -hmm. and like it had kind of like a supernatural vibe to it too where you're kind of like does this have to do with like what's going on and just a lot of things like happening in this book yeah it was my book too (laughs) um I definitely got like local woman missing vibes from it it was like you said very twisty but like I like could not guess like anything with it Mm -hmm. like until like the very end Mm -hmm. so I like that as a book yeah I did want to shout out too because I just read this when I read like two thrillers back to back but um the woman in the window which Emily I think you told me you saw the movie maybe I did watch you hadn't read the book yeah there was like a Netflix movie yeah on it. yeah which I haven't watched yet but it actually has um Amy Adams and it, so a pretty big actress so I actually have been wanting to watch that but that um book also like jaw dropped at the end big big twist at the end so that was super good as well yeah I could see that I just like Nick and I just watched the show one night and mm-hmm. so I never got the chance to read it but like yeah I was after watching it I was like that probably would have been like a good read well and like the movies like once you watch the movie it's so hard to go back and read the book you, you really yeah. can't I you have know. to like do it in the other reverse yeah definitely. yeah um all right so do you guys think that there is a book overhyped on social media yeah <laughs> <laughs> the love hypothesis Mm-hmm. yeah I just finished that one it's definitely overhyped everyone on like TikTok like talks about it all the time like how it's such a good book but I just thought it was so like the way she talks and it was so annoying like it's like the stereotypical like girl that like guys always like try to imitate that yeah. girls don't actually sound like that like that's who she reminded <laughs> me of she's the narrator you know sounded I mean, like a though? valley yeah. girl when you yeah. guys told me you guys were reading that, I was like, ning. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because you It guys, did get a lot of hype, though. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you listened to it. Sorry, did you read it or listen? I read it, yeah. yeah. I could... I tried listening to it. I couldn't do it. <laughs> the narrator was <laughs> driving me it. insane. <laughs> it's crazy how much that, like, affects the book, too. Mm-hmm. The yeah. narrator. And yeah. that's the one we did last for last week's episode. And so, if you guys haven't listened to that one go back and listen to that episode yeah. but um, our husbands also read it yeah they did it's pretty funny <laughs> <laughs> um I would have to say which you guys were totally calling me a hypocrite for this but I guess I just mentioned Colleen Hoover but I just feel like in general she's a little bit overhyped on social media mm-hmm. um like because I have read and adored like many of her books but also like there's so many other authors out there that are like better just as good better no like, offense Colleen Hoover no offense girl but like if you want to come on the pod like feel free. <laughs> <laughs> full invite no but um I love her but yes a little bit overhyped yeah I could see that I mean like 
you know like we were saying she has some like really great Mm -hmm. books and then but then I feel like there's this like reputation that she has to uphold like Mm -hmm. people think like oh this random book that she wrote like is gonna be great but it's not always like that which I I think is normal yeah for authors right like I mean Sarah G Mass always like hits it out of the park but (laughs) yeah it's it's gonna vary so yeah um for this one I would say, I don't know if Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zavine was hyped on social media. I know it was hyped on, like, Goodreads and just, like, on the internet in general. It was, like, the best fiction book of Goodreads for 2022. I wrapped it up, like, December. Um, I was, like, pretty bored with, like, the premise of it, and I just didn't really, like, understand, like, why so many people loved it. I think, like, maybe it was, like, just, like, the the building of I don't want to say world building because it's not world building it takes place in like modern society but it's all about like video games like about video game designers Hmm. and it just didn't really interest me and I don't I guess I don't see like why so many people like voted for it you know sure yeah Yeah. well on the reverse side of things do you guys think there's a book that's underhyped I think for like an a book well, actually, is an author, A.R. Tori. She's underhyped. She has really, really good suspense novels, and I never hear anyone talk about her. Yeah, yeah, like I she, haven't either. Yeah, yeah, and she has a pen name too, which we've mentioned on the podcast. She has, she writes. So, like, I think it's like I'm gonna mess it up again, but Alexandra Tori or Alessandra Tori, and oh. that's like her name for like writing like romance. Ugh. But then, like, she has, like, her, like, suspenseful, like, sure. thrillers as A.R. Tori. Why does that irritate me? <laughs> it's like the J.K. Rowling vibes, yeah? What? <laughs> <laughs> what? <Harry Potter. laughs> oh, how she, like, um, abbreviated her name because she didn't want to be recognized yeah. as a female. <laughs> okay. You just made I, me feel so She was so just dumb. trying to, like, separate <laughs> genres. <laughs> I mean, I, I no, I get, I get what you're trying to say, like how they, I, and maybe she very well did like, that. Don't hide yourself. Like, maybe that's what she was doing, where she's like, I want to be taken seriously as like a, a thriller author, like. Yeah, uh, but it's sad that these I like women she, feel like they have to like abbreviate their names to like be taken seriously. Is what I mean by that. Totally. I mean, yeah. she could have done it because of that, but I feel like she just did it. Cause she wanted to like separate her genres by like, sure. Because, like, her other, her romance, I mean, I guess, I don't know. We should look that up if she has anything on, like, why she did that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, mine that I had for this one um, was The Great Alone. And I know I mentioned Kristen Hanna earlier, but um, I feel like she gets a lot of hype for The Nightingale. But, like, mm-hmm. I, like, when I've talked to people about Kristen Hanna, they're like, oh, like, um, mentioned um, what's the other one that she does it's about the, the dust four, storm w- the four winds yeah, yeah. It's like the dust bowl era book. sure yeah. yeah Um, but then no one like brings up the great alone and I just mm-hmm. like absolutely love that book it's so good so every time I talk to um, anyone about her I'm like you have to read the great alone yeah no I feel like I don't ever hear about that one but like that and the nightingale are like up there for me yeah yeah for me for this one um, this is kind of a random thought I actually like had when I was thinking about this question, but um, have you guys read A History of Wild Places by Shane Urshaw? No. No. So it was like a book of the month book last year. Um, it was like giving me like cult vibes. So I just like picked it for my book that month and loved it. And like whenever I talk to people about it, they're like, oh, I've never heard of it. And so anyway, if you guys want to borrow it, I do have it. But that yeah. like, it's really good. Like it's kind of eerie. And like I said, it has like a cult um, undertone and like. I love it's, those kind of books. Yeah, I think you would really like it. <laughs> um, like, the darker, the better yeah. over here. Like, those are my favorite. Like, we all love spooky Like, season. oh, it's fucked up? Yeah. Okay, like, cool. <laughs> <It's good. laughs> yeah. Hand them over. Yeah, I think you would like it. Um, okay, next question. So, what was the last book that made you cry? And would you recommend it? Here we go again. Drink, guys. Coming up. <laughs> a, court, a Court of Wings and Ruin. What number is that one? It's the third. I'm so bad. I'm like, what number is it? Yeah. Okay. The ending I've of that made that. me cry. Okay. Emily knows what I'm talking yeah. about, I'm sure. I didn't cry, but I, I know what yeah. you're referring to. I'll just to. say the boats. 
and you should know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't yeah. spoil it. I'm not. I just said yeah. boats. Well, and that's what you said to me, too, about, because, well, mine is The Nightingale, but what you said to me earlier, like, I haven't read it yet. Um, but there is a um, part of that book, too. Heart-wrenching. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that book is yeah is a, a journey, for sure, emotionally. Um, for me, I would say A Little Life by Hanya Yanagara. I might be botching her last name, but it's like a literary literary fiction book. Um, and it's like 800 pages, but it is like an emotional journey as well. Like just mm-hmm. what the main character like goes through. Mm-hmm. Um, loved it and I would definitely recommend it, but it's it's got trigger warnings too. So if you're going to read A Little Life, um, definitely look those up first. So, Okay um is there a book you guys read in high school that you would consider rereading as an adult (laughs) for me (laughs) yeah (laughs) I was like a huge like I loved fantasy like in middle school high school like when I was younger so like specifically vampires yeah and then I like left it (laughs) I I, like left it I'd stopped because I was like no I'm not reading that anymore but, like, if there was, I would reread the Twilight series. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, like, see what you thought about it now. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I, like, started reading Midnight Sun, which is, like, Edward's point of view of Twilight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I haven't finished it yet, but, yeah, I mean, it was pretty good. Did you read the <laughs> other ones? Like, you, you read the whole series? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, would you reread the whole series or just, like, reread Twilight? We'll see how Twilight goes. Yeah. <laughs> right. We'll continue from there. Yeah, I can't commit. Yeah. Um, Mine was, which actually love this book. Um, the summer I turned pretty. I love this show. Have you read, wa- the read the book? No, it's it. so good. But yeah, they came out with a show. Is it on Netflix? I th- no, I think it's on like Amazon HBO. Prime or something. Oh, it's something, like yeah. something Whatever. that's not. Yeah. yeah, and it was so good. Like I read the book super fast, and also same with the series. Like I was up one night until like one or two like because I couldn't shut the show off it was so good how did the show compare to the book like did you like one over the other um I always like books better I feel like but the show was really good yeah usually everyone says the book is better but yeah I thought the show was amazing so yeah but I also like was that girl who like when we had like summer reading lists and stuff in high school like I literally like could not finish the book like I just hated reading in high school I don't know I hated reading what? the books they forced me yeah to maybe read. that was the issue and then I think it kind of puts a bad taste in your bu- mouth for like books in general like, you're like well they yeah. all suck or whatever <laughs> exactly <laughs> like, <laughs> that, that's exactly how yeah. I felt yeah. yeah and then you're like scared to like read anything because you're like well that was so bad or like I had no interest in that and I feel like the books like that we were forced to read in high school were like hard to read yeah like didn't we have to read like a Shakespeare book and everything like oh I- definitely like that's so hard like, to read actually foreign to language. be honest <laughs> they they don't always age well those classic mm-hmm. literature no. books yeah and I get it but at the same time yeah it's hard and yeah. I um I don't think I mentioned this but I'm a nurse and so like in nursing school um I like I remember just having to read like book after like anatomy book after anatomy book and same thing like I'd never sat down to read anything enjoyable because I like had to read books for nursing school. So yeah, after graduating and starting our like little book club, I'm like fell in love with it again. So yeah. Yeah. It's a nice feeling. Definitely. Cause I had that same thing happen yeah. to me. Yeah. It's like you're, you really enjoy it because it's like what you want to be doing mm-hmm. and you get to pick the books. Like, and then you don't feel guilty about like, Oh, I should be studying in set or something like that. You yeah. Know? Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, what, <laughs> When I wrote this question, I was like, thinking, <laughs> I know what you're going to say. I was literally thinking about like books we read in high school, like we we're forced to read. <laughs> so I wrote 1984 by George Orwell. <laughs> um, just because it had like, it's such like a beloved mm-hmm. book about it's like a very popular science fiction dystopian book. Um, and so unlike you guys I was like actually the girl that like read all of the assigned (laughs) reading (laughs) and so um I remember like that being one that I didn't actually hate yeah so I like I'm Mm -hmm. like okay now that I'm like older and maybe would appreciate more of like maybe I'd notice the writing style more or like themes like just now with us being in this headspace of talking about books like book club and this podcast and stuff like I'm just curious like if I would like it more now yeah um I'd be curious too. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys ever have to read like the Henrietta Lacks book 
I think that was the only one that I actually like enjoyed that we were required to read. Why don't I remember? <laughs> Wait, it was an orange book cover. What's it, it called? Sounds familiar. It was something Henrietta Lacks. It was about this woman Henrietta Lacks. I don't remember what it's about. Don't ask. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> right. I don't think I read that one. Maybe I think we, we were, were in, forced to read it. Were we in different English, like different English teachers or I something? Had Mr. Naslin. Oh, I never had him. Oh, I did. that's I probably why him. he was great. He was funny. Um. And we just had our book club last week and one of our um, book club <laughs> members, we were trying to think of like a quick read. Um, yeah, like a short one. Like we a like- short read because we we're like hoping to get together in a few weeks. And um, one of the girls mentioned, she's like, hear me out of mice and men <laughs> we were all like yeah no Absolutely like not after i just that. got done telling everyone i'll read whatever yeah <laughs> like free and easy she goes of mice and men yeah no <laughs> oh, oh yeah it's so random it was so <laughs> funny she says hear me out and then doesn't give any explanation behind it so <laughs> i love it okay moving on what was the last book that made you uncomfortable I have a good one. <laughs> haunting and hunting Adeline. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I bring that up a lot during this podcast as well. You do. I'm going to have to read those. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you do have to read them. They're really good. But those are the next ones you're going to shove down my throat. Oh, I have been already. I already started. Yeah. <laughs> you're getting yeah, there. Um, they're not for everyone, though. I mean, if you like, like, dark romance, definitely I would read it. And if you like, like, scary movies and stuff, I'd for sure Mm-hmm. read it but it is very very uncomfortable so mm-hmm. yeah um this was in my head just because i had just read it a few months ago but the woman in the window um and you're gonna have to help me out what is it called like when they are like scared of being outside agoraphobia yes, yes. I think is so. that what it is yes. yeah um so the main character in the book has agoraphobia and there there was a few times in the book I don't want to spoil anything but like where she goes outside and she kind of describes like the feeling that she has like literal panic attack feeling outside and it's like very descriptive the way the author like writes it Mm -hmm. and I just remember reading it and feeling super uncomfortable yeah like almost like I had agoraphobia like she's very descriptive about it well that's like good writing yeah no yeah yeah. Mm -hmm, for sure it makes me want to read it because like they have so many like spin-off movies and tv shows that like are based on that you should that I've like seen like I've seen at least two or three that are like like have that same idea and yeah like I didn't I didn't really get like that vibe from the show so I'd be interested to like see if I get that vibe from the book and then once you find out too with the book like why she has agoraphobia you're like oh my god like it all makes sense like yeah I would have it too like <laughs> how she develops it kind of thing so yeah yeah I would recommend that yeah oh that sounds like super interesting um I would have to say The Push by Ashley Audrain which we did an episode on it like three weeks ago I knew you were gonna say that one I know it just because well we like said this over and over again in the episode but it like it is written in a way that makes you uncomfortable just like the way she talks about her body the way she that she describes like her husband the way he treats her and like her relationship with her daughter like the whole time you're just like in a permanent cringe yeah no I yeah I read it too that's why it's such a good book because like the author really makes you feel all these things Mm -hmm. and it's not fun necessarily to like go through that but it's just it's great in that aspect like and I really liked your episode on that book too because you guys had like really good point of views and Mm -hmm. like even though you both like felt a little bit differently about the book like it was great to hear like both of your sides of like what you each thought of it I think that was our best episode that we've done so far that that one that one for sure because it's such an uncomfortable book and it makes people feel like different ways and yeah Yeah. yeah. and there were so many hidden meanings in that book like you yeah, could talk we, about that for days. Oh, I know. And, mm-hmm. like, we were even saying, too, like, with the folk of the air, like, we're slowly learning that, like, some books are great book club books or podcast books, and then other books you read it and you're just, like, Can't I, don't, analyze it. I don't really know what to say about this. Like, mm-hmm. we can tell you what happened, but, like, yeah. there's no, like, hidden meaning. Yeah. So the push is very much the opposite where, like, there's a lot of things you could think about it. So, yeah, it's a good one. Mm -hmm. um well on the opposite side of things is there a book you guys recommend that's like feel good for reading in the summer like a beach read yeah it's it's actually funny that you 
um bringing that up because like our last book club that we had I was like we need a feel good book <laughs> yeah. like I read two thrillers like back to back and like my husband works like a lot of night shifts and stuff so I'm like sitting at home alone in our like new house and I'm like every like noise that's made yeah. I'm like ah! like reading these like thrillers at home alone um so but I'm this is a super popular book so I'm sure a lot of people listening have read it but where the crawdads sing yeah that and is I, a good book oh it and it's it is a little bit of like a murder say, mystery yeah that like a thriller kind of a little a bit way. of a murder mystery but it also has like romance I feel like it's like yeah. a mixture of I feel like you definitely could read that well actually I read it like three summers ago at the cabin mm-hmm. like it was fourth of july yeah. weekend like cranked the whole thing out like on the pontoon yeah um yeah there's like some parts that are like but i feel like really you happy. don't know it's a murder mystery until like later into the book yeah. you know what i mean like throughout most of it it's like this cute like yeah i mean i would love story between her and this like childhood right you're not like boy. reading this book like oh my god I'm so uncomfortable right and no I'm happy mm-hmm. yeah and I actually read it at the cabin too so that's why it like popped into my head immediately it was like oh I remember reading this on the pontoon like it was yeah. so good yeah I can see that yeah that's one I have to add it's my TBR I haven't read, you haven't read that one Mm-mm. oof it's good no one. um for me I would say anything by like Abby Jimenez I think that's how you say her name she's like mm-hmm. a local author yes we read one of her books yeah, yeah. there's something world um a, a part, part of, of your world. world part of your yeah, world yeah part of your mm-hmm. world anything by her but uh, this is like completely the opposite of like the direction you guys are going but i actually put down a self-help book which was you are a badass mm, and the only yeah. reason i say that one is because i read it during the summer and i was like sun tanning like by a pool at a hotel in texas and then yeah, I don't Did know. It just like gave me such good badass. Vibes. Yeah, I felt like a fucking badass. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna have to borrow that one. I've actually I, I too. lost it. I don't oh, know you... where it is. Yeah. Uh, do you have the actual Probably copy? Or do you have Texas. The... I have actual copy. I think okay. hers yeah. is here. Oh yeah. Yeah. I oh, brought yeah. copies I here. My books. Yeah, there. I'll have to read that one, and I can go into summer feeling like a badass. I read that book like over New Year's when we were like up in a cabin, like cozy vibes. Like yeah, it's good. Yeah. Yeah, different vibe, but like I still feel like it's like a feel good. Oh, yeah. very empowering. Yeah, totally. Um, I kind of have something a little bit different than both of you. So I have The House in the Cerulean Sea by T.J. Clune. So it's a fantasy book. It's I don't want to say the word young adult because I feel like sometimes that can be like a negative tone for some people. But it's like a book about this guy who he's like a caseworker for magical children. So, like I said, it's fantasy. Okay. And he, like, goes to this orphanage to, like, do an inspection on the home and, like, the way that these children are being raised and stuff. And he, like, suddenly, like, he's, like, kind of a loner. He's just, like, a cat. And he's, like, such a lovable, like, kind of, like, grumpy old guy. And he kind of finds his place with, like, these orphans and, like, the people that are, like, raising them and stuff. And it's really sweet. Cute. Um, it's really cute. Yeah, I loved it. I alternated between like reading it and then I was listening to it too just because like I was reading it for um a different book club I was doing and I was like really cutting it close to like when we were going to meet so I like luckily could download the audio book on Libby do not listen to the audio (laughs) book the guy's like um narrator I'm sorry to the narrator but like his voice was really ruin ruining some of these children's voices like just (gasps) does um, he like try to be a child yeah but like they're all magical (laughs) beings so like he just some of the voices he was doing oh, i was no. like oh yeah no <laughs> so just if you're gonna pick up that book i'd read it yeah um yeah just thought i would mention that um yeah it's cute though so next question what was the strangest book you've ever read <laughs> <laughs> i think we all we, we all, we all the, same the same one <laughs> tender is the flesh by augustina bats terica so disturbing yeah I loved it. What? <laughs> loved everything. Emily had such a hard time with that book. I, I was so, so uncomfortable. Funny. It was uncomfortable, definitely. But like, yeah, I love scary movies. So it was like, and it was, we read it during spooky season. So like, yeah, it was well, like and that was the whole point. Like we were talking about like, what do we want to read for October? We picked like the creepiest. That was the goal though. I think. <laughs> yeah, you're yeah. right. That was what yeah. we were going for. Yeah. We have to do that again. This year. <laughs> do you want to? describe what 
<laughs> it was a yeah, let's have Emily describe that yeah. one. Okay. <laughs> we will have to do an episode on this one, but it's basically like it's dystopian, like futuristic where for some reason like animal meat is inconsumable. Like humans can no longer like eat beef. Like pork, it gets ex- like it's like contaminated or like i i can't understand like the science behind it but so long story short like slowly society moves towards like cannibalism and so they're like factory farming humans yeah like growing humans like and then killing and eating them literally the same process that they go through for like animals and factory farming like they are doing that to humans like breeding them um i don't want to like spoil too much but like it's the same process graphic yeah <laughs> it's like into if she's you wanna, very descriptive yeah oh. it's she doesn't leave anything out um if you want to read something really disturbing that would be the book for you i will say though that like i feel like there's a hidden message in that book too yeah so that's also why yep. i think we liked it like we all wanted to go vegetarian after <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was fun though for like our book club um, meet up for we that had a one. lot like, of opinions about that one. that was a good one yeah it was fun and then kayla in our book club like oh had God. all the snacks laid out and she like named them all like yeah like in the book they call meat the special meat yeah. and she made like a buffalo chicken dip and called it special meat <laughs> did it you was... like lose your appetite I don't no think I, I, was still I still ate it i still ate it yeah it was it was pretty good yeah <laughs> that was fun um okay What's the last book you DNF'd? Did not finish. For me, I can't DNF a book. Like, I... It's like a... I don't know. It's like... Every time I start a book, it's like this challenge for me to, like, finish it, whether I like it or not. Like, I cannot, like... Even if I absolutely hated the book, like, I cannot just, like, put it down. I don't know why. That's like, a I good trait to have, it. though. No, yeah. it's not, because I'm wasting my time. <laughs> Re- like, if I picked up a freaking 800-page book and I yeah. did not like it after page, like, 50, I'd be pissed. Yeah, <laughs> but, like, like, think about, like, if it gets really good at the end, like, true. then you, like, would have missed out on that, which true. I probably that is have very many true. times. Yeah. What was um, that one book we read for book club that, like, got so good at the end where she was kind of, like, taking us through different, like generation or Addie LaRue or yes no? um yeah. the secret oh, like yeah. of Addie LaRue the invisible life of Addie LaRue yes I think. Mm-hmm. yeah that was it yeah I liked that book you Wait, did you hated DNF? on it I feel like but that's what you DNF no I read that one but it but that was why I thought of it was because it got good at the end yeah and so I'm true. glad I read it all the way through it was because like at the end it got really good mm-hmm. um my DNF which was like actually on accident and I'm planning on finishing it was the good lie by <laughs> A.R. Tori. I know it was one of our book club books and I like actually really enjoyed the first like hundred pages and I have to like really enjoy a book t- in order for me to like. That one's so good. I How know. Have you not finished and it? <laughs> like when we had book club I was like you guys like I gotta go like I want to finish like I'll catch up quickly and then leave like I like have to finish this book mm-hmm. and then I don't know why I didn't. I literally don't know why I didn't. I feel I like you can't busy. like wait you, too that's long when you to got your house. Book. I know. Yeah, I had like just moved into our house and stuff, so I think that's why I never like sat down and finished it. But I, I feel like to. it's so hard to like finish a book though. Like once you set it down for a little while, mm-hmm. because and if you, you start like, something else, game yeah. Over. Like I did that with *A Court of Silver Flames*, and I yeah. still haven't like picked it back up, which I plan on doing it. But like, like I didn't DNF it, but like, yeah, it's just like it's hard to get back into it. Yeah. Yep. For sure. Yeah, I'm like the same way as you, Paige. Where like I can't like not finish a book. Um, but I'm a little bit more inclined to do so if it's just like a library book. Like if I, it's a, like a, uh, audio book I got from Libby or just borrowed it from the library. I'm like, I didn't pay for this. Like I have no problem setting it down. Although I would say that like, I have a, a friend Lauren from work who she like recently said something that stuck with me where she was like, life's too short to read bad books. Aww. And she's like, if you're like, she had such a good point. It's like, if your like list of books you want to read is so big and you're wasting your time on books you hate, like you're kind of just wasting your time, which I was like, oh, that's interesting. However, I still have issues with like DNFing books, but the last. I get that. But then what if it en- like exactly. the ending's Exactly. I was just yeah. going to say that, like mm-hmm. that contradicts with what you said because yeah, yeah like yeah. what if the ending is good and it could have been like. That's true. Worth it. It could have yeah. tied the whole beginning and, and then you would have been like, oh, maybe that wasn't so bad. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, or if it's like a slow build or whatever yeah um, but the last book that I actually did set down was My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones he's like a horror writer um, and I was listening to it on Libby and like 
the main character has like such a large knowledge of like slasher movies like she was constantly like referencing all these like old slashers which is like impressive but I was just like kind of bored because I was like okay like the plot though like where is the story going like you're just talking about all your all these movies you like like it was just it was slow and I was like yeah no um so yeah haunting Adeline the author kind of does that in there but there's actually like a plot but she mm-hmm. like references a lot of like scary movies oh like uh like popular ones yeah some popular ones like old ones yeah I'm just gonna have to read those you just keep keep suggesting them um okay do you guys have a book that you would recommend as like a great listen for a road trip I can't listen to books I've tried (laughs) I do not I do not like audiobooks I hate them like the the narrator ruins it for me every time um I'm gonna get like torn apart for this and like (laughs) canceled probably but like I personally this is just my opinion you guys are probably gonna be pissed at me but I personally don't count it as reading a book <laughs> like stop it right now <laughs> I do you're gonna get pissed at that but like no it's I like listening get to that. A why do I get that yeah you're you right you know what I well yeah, yeah I mean true. like you're listening to the story but you're not yeah. reading it it's not the relaxing of sitting down and reading a book. Like yeah, I, I love holding the book. Yeah. And I'm notorious for like if I'm doing something around our house or like doing a house project or something, I have something playing in the background. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like it's not if I'm listening to a book, an audiobook, I'm not sitting down and reading and relaxing. Like, no, I'm doing something busy. And yeah. it's so hard to like I think like listening to an audiobook and then like a podcast, like it's so hard to like stay along with the story because like if you're listening to a podcast usually like you don't need to like know what they previously said right they kind of like change like the subject or like depending on what podcast you listen to but you kind of have to like like pay attention and I just cannot pay attention long enough yes to like listen to it I totally relate to that because there's been so many books that I've like listened to where I've like rewinded I'm like wait what was like what were they talking about and I can read faster than I can listen to it so I'd rather just read it oh yeah (laughs) I could see where you guys are coming from with that I I think that's like definitely fair if like you're not listening to the book at all and then you go on your Goodreads and you're like oh I finished it like it's like did you though like <laughs> did you really so I get it um I will say that like when I only listen to audiobooks when I'm like driving in the car yeah where I'm like I have to listen to it there are moments where I like zone out and I'm like oh wait what but like for the most part like I would say I know exactly what happened I mean like so many of like the books we've talked about on our podcast like I listen to so as long as you like know what happened and you can hold their conversation like by all means like check that box on Goodreads um but I could totally see like where it would be not fair to count it if you were like I have no idea what I just listened to for 10 hours and I'm not like judging people with like what they want to oh, do that's yeah, just like no. not what I want to do and like that's my like personal belief like <laughs> yeah. I yeah. wouldn't I wouldn't be able if I listened to a book like I wouldn't be able to tell myself that I read that book but like uh, someone else might think differently and that's totally fine like I'm not judging them if they like want to say they read the book but they listen to it whatever yeah but yeah. like I just wouldn't be able to say that for myself yeah it's just like personal preference yeah. and like what you can handle um like, pay yeah attention. I did I do have one for this because I listened to it and wasn't like cringing at the narrator the whole time (laughs) um but we all just recently read or listened to um I'm glad my mom died by Jenna McCurdy Mm -hmm. um and she actually is the narrator for the book and like I just like really enjoyed it yeah and I didn't have a hard time like following that one like I was like fully invested the entire book um and also like would highly recommend that because it was good yeah good listen good read (laughs) yeah I agree that was a very interesting book especially if you watch like our iCarly and you know who she is I feel like you guys have to do a podcast on that one an episode that was like a good I also have the audiobook for that one yeah um yeah like it's like talk about it's like a good example of like you never really know what's going on behind the scenes Mm -hmm. you know because we all watched iCarly we all like thought she was so funny and so happy-go-lucky and whatever and like no one has any idea what's going on behind the scenes so that's so true yeah literally um so my first thought for this question is local woman missing by mary kubica we did an episode on that one so i'm gonna go ahead and like throw another one in there but 
um my husband and i listened to the silent patient by alex michaelides mm, yeah and that's a really good thriller book um and he is not a reader like you guys know this from like last week <laughs> um but like that was one that he listened to with me like the whole way through on a road trip and he was like that was pretty good like what's next and i was like okay so um Cute. yeah it was good the narrator has like a british accent mm-hmm. so like not mad about it at yeah. all um yeah no that's a good recommendation because my husband and i on, on road trips a lot of times listen to like true crime podcasts so mm-hmm. if like we found like kind of like a book like that like a thriller mystery type of thing i think he'd really enjoy it yeah too yeah he, i think he would like that one yeah um cool moving on so can you guys think of a non-fiction book that taught you something and then what did you learn I haven't read like that many nonfiction books. I think the majority of the nonfiction books that I read were probably in high school <laughs> that they yeah. made us read. Yeah. Um, but I wrote down Sex Cult None um, just because like, the th- I guess the thing I learned with it is like you can always find like strength and hardships and like no matter like how bad life gets, like there's mo- like you can change your life. No, like you always have the ability to change. So yeah, totally. Yeah, I liked that one. Um, I also don't read nonfiction books. Um, so for this, I actually thought of one that I want to read. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's Your Dog is Your Mirror. <gasps> I know. I'm like such a softie. But on the but front, I, I don't know if anyone's familiar, but on the front um, cover of the book is a picture of a black lab like Aww. looking and I it looks just like my dog Rocky and I get like so emotional I'm like I have to read that book because I like saw this meme the other day and it was like um it's like you have anxiety and your dog has anxiety and I'm <laughs> like literally my dog like reflects me with that kind of stuff so that is like, so cute I know I have to read it maybe this summer I'll I'll put it on the list but well, come back and tell us your thoughts yeah um so I put like a memoir book as like, which I guess is technically a nonfiction book. Um, but it's so the book is called Go Back to Where You Came From by Wajahat Ali. I might be botching his first name a little bit. Um, but so I listened to that one. He was the narrator for his book. Um, and he's a Muslim American, like grew up. He spent his whole life in the U.S. He um, like his parents like came over um, from the Middle East and he so it's really funny like he kind of has some comedy in there but then also gets like pretty serious about what what it's like to be muslim american and like how you can you know check all the boxes on like what it takes to be an american like Mm -hmm. have a stable job like pay your taxes do all things and like do everything that society expects of you and still feel out of place oh wow yeah and he actually had this whole section on like what it was like to be muslim american during like 9 11 yeah and then the trump era like his presidency like he talked a lot about how hard it was and like i know that sounds like ignorant or naive to be like like i knew that obviously that was hard on like those people yeah like being so discriminated against but just like hearing him talk about what they went through and like how that felt like yeah like I said like thinking you're this American and then having people still look at you differently it just really like kind of changed how I see things like just like I feel like it it enlightened me a little bit like I learned a lot from that book People um, need to read more books like that. Yeah. Like, can we be yeah, honest? Yeah, we should be like, reading more nonfiction. <laughs> yeah. And that's a great book because it's really funny, too, because actually in the beginning of the book, before he gets really serious, he, like, imitates his parents, like, uses their accent, and it's just, like, he's goofy. Oh, he's that. goofy. He's funny. Like, yeah. I was literally listening to him in the car, like, laughing. It's, like, and lighthearted then, and, like, serious. Yeah. Yeah. The first half is, like, lighthearted, and the second half he kind of gets into, like, the more serious stuff. So, yeah, that's a good book. Awesome. Yeah. What's the best book you guys have read so far this year? Drink. <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> I was thrown off and then I was like, wait. I was like, wait, why? <laughs> uh, a Court of Mist and Fury. The second, Akatar. Yeah, that's a fantastic oh, book. I have to sit down so and read it. It's like, I feel like I need some free time, though, in order to like commit to that because... They've been collecting be dust at your house and I'm I know, not okay Emily with that. Emily is so upset with me about it. <laughs> um... It's just such a commitment because you just know you're going to, like, need 24 hours to yeah. finish the darn thing. Um, mine would be All the Dangerous Things, which I mentioned earlier. Just so good. Yes. Like, I finished the second half in 
a few hours. I recommended that book. <laughs> just, just yeah, kidding. good. Yeah, that no, was a page honestly, pick. That was yeah. We love a page pick. Yes. Um, I don't pick money. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I reiterate what you guys said. I love both those books. Um, For me, I would say the Throne of Glass series just in general. I didn't read the whole series this year, but I've said in the past that like I kind of chipped away at the eight books in the series. I read like the last two this year and they're both fantastic. Like Drink, Sarah J. Mass, like, yeah, they're fantastic. Can't say enough good things about her. Yeah. Um, On the other side of things, what's your least favorite book you read this year? starts with us by Colleen Hoover yeah that was mine too I know we were all so excited about it I know such a letdown I think she just wrote it because people were asking for it she didn't actually she was peer pressured into Mm -hmm. I would have been fine with it not coming out just being left to our imagination like oh they probably had a happy ending because it kind of seemed like they well sorry I'm spoiling I'm sorry but like you you kind of to that yeah at the end of it ends with us Mm -hmm. yeah yeah um just to throw another one in there i mentioned this one in an earlier episode this year but i'd like to play alone please by tom segura he's a comedian just didn't really like vibe with his comedy most of the way through was kind of bored um didn't really like it that much okay here's the final question in our book talk episode so what are the three books you're most excited to read this year drink <laughs> <laughs> no Great emily question. said they're creating dust i have to finish akatar i just need the time to sit down and do it <laughs> um and then also i really want to read sarah j mass um crescent city That's yeah I have other those good too. series right yes right yeah okay. i liked those ones those just as much as akatar yeah are we drinking for sarah j mass or just akatar <laughs> <laughs> i don't know <laughs> both <laughs> um so anything else you want to read just you guys have the best recommendations, so I just, like, trust you guys. A page pick's always good. An Emily pick's always good. Just spend the rest of the year reading Sarah J. Mass, and you'll be fine. Right, and that's going to take me, like, <laughs> all summer anyway to get through all those, so. Yeah. They're thick. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Pager? Crescent City. Crescent City series. Um, mm-hmm. There's two in that one currently. Um, and then I just like want to find another good thriller. I'm on like a thriller kick lately. So <laughs> yeah, I haven't, I don't know which one yet, but I have a ton of books on my TBR. So was it you guys, we were just talking about, um, Abby Jimenez, Jimenez, Jimenez whatever yeah. her last name is, is coming out with a new one. Yeah. Actually yeah. It came out like April this month. 11th, I think. Yeah. I'd like to read that because I really enjoyed part of your world that we read by her. So. We're doing an episode on that book. Love that. Yeah, this summer. Guys. Yeah. 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 I so want that one I would put on my list. Yeah. What about um, you? For me, so I am super excited to read A Soul of Ash and Blood. That's like the fifth book in the Blood and Ash series by Jennifer Armentrout. Um, and then I want to read Someone Else's Shoes by Jojo Moyes because I've really liked a couple of her books. Maybe I should have mentioned her earlier as like a a reliable author. Um, But that one came out this year that's like sitting on my shelf. And then um, I'm super excited to read the Plated Prisoner series by Raven Kennedy. Paige and I, that's actually our next like fantasy series we've decided to do like a compilation of episodes on. So like Folk of the Air, we're going to read like one every other week or whatever. Um, but it just seems like so many people that love like Akatar and like Blood and Ash and stuff like really liked this series. Yeah, I'm excited to read it too. I already bought, I think like the first four or five of that. Four, I think of that series. Yeah, there's like four out right now. And then I think there's like a fifth one coming out later in the year. So we'll have to do that one too. But yeah. Awesome. Cool. Um, that pretty much wraps it up then. Yeah. What are you guys currently reading? nothing <laughs> i know i was just gonna say i, have to I just finished all, all the dangerous things but same yeah um we're gonna pick up what was the one we came up with for next month um legends and lattes yes i'm excited i'm so excited about that's that. our next book club book and like you had said earlier like you were down for like a cozy happy read <laughs> yes. and we kept i like heard that it's literally like a book like as if you're drinking like a warm drink like in a cozy cabin like that's how this book like feels like it's just excited for that yeah yeah and it's fantasy so i think it's like gonna be fun in that sense so yeah 
maybe we'll have to do an episode on that one too we haven't read a fantasy for book club no we haven't not since like Addie larue i guess that's considered fantasy I, I guess I wouldn't have considered that, but maybe it's kind of yeah. that, I guess. Yeah. It's like fantasy vibes, but like no Romance. like fantasy world, you know? Mm-hmm. Like it's takes place in like past and present, but Yeah. Hmm. Definitely like taking us out of our comfort zone a little bit. So Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Well, well do you wanna mention the beer we forgot to mention what we're drinking i know i was just thinking that so we actually forgot to mention since this is a book talk episode we are promoting a local beer per usual so we are actually um drinking sledhound by voyager brewing company so this is a brewery up in grand marie minnesota which has um, been deemed minnesota's coolest small town abby and i actually spent our like early years of life up in grand marie um we lived there for a few years coolest as in like it's cool or like it's cold because it's both both <laughs> probably <laughs> when you said close I was like wait really yeah yeah it's- this brewery is so fun and my brother-in-law is gonna be like where the hell are my beers <laughs> <laughs> I know <laughs> they were his I think that they might have come from like a trip up north they're like, so good though I'm yeah they're so good um, I'm not positive that we can get it here in the Twin Cities, so sorry, Nick. <laughs> um, thank you. Take oh, another trip. Sad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, they did sit there for like a month, so oh. mine now. Probably won't notice then, I guess. His <laughs> loss is our gain. I know. Yeah. Cool. Thanks for having me, guys. Yes. Thank you for this coming. This was so thank you. fun. When can I come back? <laughs> soon. Yeah, soon. We're gonna have to no, plan this something. This was super fun. Yeah. yeah yeah thank you for driving down here and yeah oh, anytime it's 85 degrees in minneapolis mm-hmm. it's the warmest weather i've felt in a while it's so. a great day yeah yeah we have some good weather coming up mm-hmm. but, all right so well that is a wrap for this episode of literary lounge thanks for chatting with us again i'm your host Paige. i'm emily and i'm abby <laughs> well next week we are going to be reading is it glint glint is what's our next book it's lucy's score oh yeah i believe what's the name is of it, it though? it's things we never got over by lucy score hmm. okay yeah so next week are we reading things we never got over by lucy score so join us every wednesday for more book chats and don't forget to share your thoughts on our social media um go check us out on youtube and leave a comment down below if you want to continue this chat let us know any of your answers to the questions that we talked about earlier we'd love to hear your thoughts and any book recommendations you have leave them down there too all right well we'll see you next time bye guys bye Bye. Bye.